Yo, howdy. Welcome to today's episode of Tristan Take Video. I'm currently 290 kilometers and 5,000 meters of climbing into a massive day of bike riding in the Spanish Pyrenees. And over the next four days, I'm doing what I'm calling the Tourmalet Strike Mission. A ride from my door in Girona to the top of the most iconic climb in cycling and back again. In today's episode, I'm showing you where I'm going, how much climbing I'm doing, and most importantly, what I'm eating for this four day, 850 kilometer journey. So without further ado, I'm gonna roll a little intro here and then we're gonna get into it. This is a Tourmalet Strike Mission. Enjoy. Bon dia and welcome to today's video. I am just starting up my first climb on the second day of the Tourmalet Strike mission. Yesterday was an absolutely massive day on the bike. That's where I filmed that intro. I ended up with just over 300 kilometers and uh, about 5,300 meters of climbing. So a really big day, which is why I didn't film this bit. But before we get up to what I'm doing today and the mission of this trip, I thought I'd just catch you guys up to where this whole thing came from. So basically the Tourmalet strike mission came to my mind recently actually, but the idea of a strike mission was something that I've been wanting to do for the last few years. I did it in September, 2021. I rode from Girona to the top of Mont Ventoux and back basically as fast as I could. And I did actually film a vlog about it, but I didn't end up producing the video. I kind of didn't really enjoy the trip in the way I thought I would want to, partially because a few things went wrong on day one. And uh, when I got to Von 2, it was just not quite the same level of fulfillment that I was hoping for. But the idea of a strike mission is to kind of seek out one place, go and ride to it and come home again as quick as possible, or at least within a reasonable time frame. And for me, the Von 2 trip, that was about 1100 Ks in four days. This trip that I'm doing now to Tourmalet and back is about 850. It's got about 16,000 meters of climbing as well. Part of the reason that the Von 2 trip back in September September 2021 wasn't my favorite it was because day one I did 360 kilometers but it was basically flat along the French coast for ages and I really don't like riding on the flat that much I find going up climbs more fulfilling and then going down the other side means you either give yourself a little rest or you just get to enjoy a descent and your average speed picks back up so for this trip I wanted to go somewhere a bit more hilly so I decided you know what let me go into the Pyrenees and search out another super famous iconic climb one of the other little things with this strike mission idea is that it's uh, what I call credit card packing. So it's not bike packing in the sense of packing up and camping along the way or sleeping on the side of the road. It's taking a very small amount of clothing and just the things you need and riding and staying in hotels along the way. Not fancy hotels, but just somewhere that you can actually have a shower, wash your kit, sleep properly, and then get up and crack on the next day. So a part of my love of bike riding is going fast. And although I love bike packing, obviously, I don't love the idea of just slogging away for hours every day, not really getting anywhere. I like the idea that you can average almost the same speed that you would average as if you were just out for a bike ride, but you're carrying all the things to keep yourself completely autonomous. So anyway, what I did was on Sunday night, I packed up my bike with my bags. I'm just running a very lightweight rear bag and a very small frame bag on my bike, as you can see. I left Girona yesterday morning, Monday morning, just after 5.30 a.m. So an early start, I rolled out of Girona heading sort of northwest towards the Pyrenees. Did my usual route out of Girona as if I was just doing a regular ride. And then I uh, got to the top of the first little climb at kilometer 30. Alrighty, so I've done uh, just over an hour about an hour and a couple of minutes, just got to the top of the first climb, which actually just looks like a little speed bump on the profile today. It's this tiny little one. If you're riding in Girona, I guess you could consider it a climb, but given today's parkour, this is a uh, just a speed bump. I've had about half my first bottle, about 500 mils, and that's got about 40 grams of carbs in it. Once I got over the top of that first little climb there, I went down the other side, and then I turned right, heading out towards a lot, towards the base of the Pyrenees. As I got towards a lot, the sun started coming up, which was super nice because I don't generally see the sunrise in a lot. It's just not a place I ride to very early in the morning. I cruised through a lot, and I started up the first of what I considered one of the main climbs of yesterday, and that was the Calder Can. Ooh, that very nice morning light. 
The colder can is about a 13 or 14 kilometer climb. Average is about six or 7%. Now what's interesting is if you look at the profile of yesterday's right here, the colder can didn't even look like a big climb in comparison to the ones to come. But generally the colder can is actually a climb I consider pretty sizable. So it shows you just how big the real Pyrenean climbs are. I went up the colder can and then eventually I got to the top of that. Alrighty, so two hours, 45 minutes in. About 70 kilometers, just coming over the top of the second climb here, down to Ripoll now. Now Ripoll is the way I usually go when I ride to Andorra. You might've seen that if you've seen some of my other videos. I went out the other side of Ripoll and then I started up the Long Valley Road up to Ribes de Fresa. And then once I got up to there, I headed through the town and out the other side up the Colada de Tossus. All right, three hours, 40 minutes in, just cracked the 100 kilometer mark. I've just started up the Colada de Tossus, one of the uh, bigger climbs of today, 23 k's long. A beautiful morning out in the mountains. It's so nice to be coming up to the Tossus at quarter past nine in the morning rather than what I've done in the past, which is about midday or one or two when it's much hotter. Perfect temperature, blue sky, zero wind, and a super nice day to be out riding a bike. One of my big aims with this trip is trying to keep my elapsed time as close to my riding time as possible. It's one of the things that when I did Atlas Mountain Race last year, I really failed on. I stopped far too much for far too long and didn't just keep moving. So the aim with this trip is to just keep moving forward momentum whenever I'm on the bike and have as little elapsed time as possible. One of the things with yesterday as well was that it did get very hot. Now I have been training myself quite a lot in Girona for the heat because I've got Badlands coming up in about three weeks. So I was pumping through water yesterday. Eventually when I got to Laseo and a little bit further, I stopped at a little kind of restaurant thing, went inside, grabbed a couple of bottles of water, filled up my bottles and then kept going. Again, trying to keep the elapsed time low, but it's amazing how quickly it adds up once you've kind of stood in line to get bottles of water or searched around in your bag looking for sachets of carbohydrate powder to put in the bottles to keep you going. Alrighty, so just coming up cold El Canto here. This is my second of uh, the three big climbs for today. This one's about 21 kilometers long. Got some real savage ramps at the bottom there, but uh, now it's kind of flattened out. There's a bit of a descent and then it climbs up to the top. Right now I'm 198 kilometers in, just a bit over seven hours. And I've done a bit over 3000 meters of climbing. So by the time I get to the top of this, I will probably be around 4000 meters of climbing. And then it's just one last big push over the Bonagua to get over to VA or where I'm going today. Once I got to the top of that, I was just a bit above 200 kilometers into yesterday, headed down the other side on a beautiful big flowing descent. The descent off the Canto into Sort is one of my favorites because of how scenic it is. When you get over the crest of the climb, the mountains just look so big. And you really know at that stage, you're definitely in the Pyrenees. Once I came down there, I was trying to keep my average speed quite reasonable. Luckily, I came through Sort and out the other side, heading towards Asteri de Neu. And uh, because I had a sweet tailwind along this beautiful valley road, I was actually able to keep my average speed pretty decent. I headed along that beautiful valley road, looking around at the mountains, thinking to myself, this is exactly why I moved to Europe. And I kept going up to the final climb, Porto Bonagua. Alrighty, starting up the mighty Porto Bonagua. I believe that stands for good water. I assume so. Anyway, this is such a decent climb. So picturesque at the top and just so main roady down here. But uh, keen to get up this one. I got about 50 k's to go to the end of this route. Now the Port de Bonagua being my final climb meant that I was actually pretty tired by this stage. Starting to pedal squares, 10 hours in. But because I'd been eating so much the entire day, actually felt better than I expected. And I kind of pushed my way up those sweet switchbacks. I had a tailwind towards the top, which was really, really nice. And then eventually I got to the top and I'd done about 5,300 meters of climbing. Alrighty, so just reaching the top of the Port de Bonagua. Such a good last climb to end it on. Now I've just got about a uh, 10 or 15K descent down to Vieja and to my accommodation. Vieja is a beautiful town in the Catalan Pyrenees. It's got a nice freshwater stream running through it and that's where I decided I would stay last night. Alrighty, big day done. Time to have a shower, wash my kit, and then I am going to go out and get my dinner. Time to get recovery. Mm -hmm.
So that all brings us up to where we are now and this morning on day two, where I'm climbing up the Col de Portion, which is the first of a whole bunch of climbs for today. I've got a, so many on the uh, profile that I don't even know how many there are, but there's a lot. There's about 5,500 meters of climbing today. So an even more climby day than yesterday, but a bit shorter at only 200 kilometers. So this morning when I woke up in Vieja there, I went and grabbed some breakfast, tried to eat as much as I could. Although I gotta say, after having a big dinner last night, I actually wasn't that hungry this morning. I think also because I carved up so heavily throughout the day yesterday, I wasn't in a glycogen deficit, but I had some breakfast this morning. I went and rolled out down this big valley road, really good average speed for the first little while because it was the first, the first 13 Ks were kind of downhill. So that was cool. And then turn left at Bozost, and I've started up the Col de Portion now. I'm still in Catalonia or in Spain, but I'm heading up to the French border, literally cross into France at the top of this climb. And then in a few more climbs, I'm going to reach the top of the Col de Tourmalet. All right, so that's enough talking for the moment. That's caught you guys up to where I am now. Day two, I'm gonna keep rolling about 20 kilometers into 200 and only done about 600 meters of climbing. So I've got quite a bit left to do. I'll chat to you guys more. So I've just turned on to the lower slopes of the Col de Tourmalet. I've done uh, about just over four hours now, about 94 kilometers or so. So a slightly slower average speed than yesterday, but that's okay because it's been literally up and down since the start of the day. I've come over three decent climbs so far. And then the Tourmalet, this one, this is my fourth. And then I've got another three going back the other way. The climbs that I came over earlier this morning, the Portillon, the Perisorda, and then the Aspan, they're all great climbs, but none of them have quite the fame and the infamy that the Tourmalet has. It was used this year for the first time in the, uh, the Women's Tour de France. Super exciting racing that day. Cassie and Yubi Adonga off the front on these bits that I'm riding on now and held it. Most of the way to the line got hunted down towards the top. I mean, the men's racing, the men's Tour de France, this was the stage where unfortunately Jai got tailed off and lost the yellow jersey. But then Pogacar took that famous victory, dropping Jonas Wingegaard at the end of the stage. So quite an interesting uh, climb, this one. Quite a, quite a famous and iconic one. I won't bang on about it too much. You guys know all about it, but yeah, I really like it. I was quite inspired to go and use this for my strike mission this year. So that's what I'm doing. One thing that is interesting as well is that this morning, because I was slightly, slightly closer to the Mediterranean, the weather's quite different. It was quite hot and sweaty and sunny this morning. And then as I got closer, coming up the colder span, you're a little bit closer to the Atlantic side. And the weather actually comes in a little bit. You get this sort of wind. I had a bit of a headwind just coming down this valley just then. And it's blowing sort of cloud up the valley here. So I'm guessing by the time I get to the top of the Tourmalet, it's gonna be super clouded in, which is quite interesting. I'm glad I bought my little jacket because I think the temperature is gonna drop right down. But yeah, I'm gonna make my way to the top now. Got about 15 Ks to go or so up this one, quite a bit of climb maybe a thousand or more meters. I'm at 995 meters elevation. So a bit over a thousand meters to go. I'll chat to you guys in a bit.
so close to the top and then turn around and come back down. So that is the top of the Tourmalet. I just rode to the top there. I was gonna stop and wait and get a little photo with the sign and take some video and have a chat, but there's just a mess of people absolutely everywhere. It's obviously super nice, super popular up here. Heaps of cyclists around, heaps of motos and stuff like that. But that is the turnaround point for me. So I'm at the top of the Tourmalet, just above 2000 meters here. I'm gonna head back down through the cloud that I came up on the way up. That was kind of cool. And then I'll make my way back. I've got three big climbs, two of the same ones that I did earlier and then one different one. I'm taking a slightly different route back. Time to head back and I'll get to Banyeres du Bouchon, finish off this massive day. left to go. <laughs> So just coming up the last climb of the day, back up the other side of the Parasword. I came up the other side over there this morning, and now I'm coming up back over towards Banyeres to Luchon. I've done 5,600 meters of climbing in 189 point, 190 kilometers. And uh, I am exhausted now, holy shit. One of the big things I've noticed is I ran out of uh, carbohydrate sachets and also fuel plus gels and it's incredible how when you go low on carbs just how much slower you go. That happened about an hour and a half ago, a couple of hours ago. I did actually stop in at an Intersport and bought these terrible little gels that had about 15 grams of carbs in each. I had to have about four of them to get anywhere so it was a complete waste of money but they just got me over the, the last climb, the Val Azet Luron, Val Luron Azet. And uh, now I'm just heading up this final one up here. A big, big day to back up a big, big day yesterday. It has been beautiful though. The scenery, the landscapes, everything this afternoon. It's been stunning and uh, really, really cool to climb these climbs. So yeah, just enjoying cruising along even though I'm going quite slow. I'm gonna finish off the top of the Parasord here. Got about two k's to go and uh, then I cruise down last downhill just down to Banyeres de Luchon where I'm staying tonight. All right that is the Parasword and all the climbing out the way.
Alrighty, howdy, welcome to day three of the Tall Blaze Strike Mission. Today is a bit of a sort of intermission day or it's a bit of a commuter day. I'm heading today from Banyeras de Luchon in France where I stayed last night over to La Cé de Gel in Spain in Catalonia. Today's route, about 150 k's. Still got about three and a half thousand meters of climbing or so, so it's still a lot of climbing, but after yesterday, it feels like a flat day. Yesterday really was a very, very large day of bike riding. Just over 200 kilometers, about 5,800 meters of climbing. It had seven big climbs. As I uh, said, just at the end of that last recap before I descended off the parasaur yesterday, that was a lot of climbing, ending with a few very slow ascents. In particular, the Val on Azette and uh, the parasaur. That combo at the end of that day was just enough to put me properly into the box. One of the things that I've been really focused on, as I mentioned yesterday in this trip, is like a low elapsed time every day. Yesterday it blew out a touch. I had about 40 minutes of stop time compared to a bit under 30 the day before, but I sort of did start to really blow up towards the end there. But uh, yeah, I crested the last bit of the Parasaur yesterday afternoon, just at about 6.30 or close to 7 p.m. Descended down into Banyeres de Luchon. And then I went and found my hotel and I got changed, washed my kit, and then went out to dinner last night. Now, on the menu for today, I am currently riding up my second climb of today. This is the Bonagua from the other side, from the kind of past the Bacchiera Beret side. So, what I did this morning was when I got up, I packed up all my stuff and then I had a very cruisy rollout time because it's a bit of a shorter day. I went straight from where I was staying across to a boulangerie. I got myself a little apple tart and orangina and then I started rolling right at 10 a.m. I rolled through Banyeres to Luchon and after literally about 500 meters, I started up the climb of the Col de Portion, which is the first one that I climbed yesterday. And then eventually I got to the top of the Portion and then I crossed back into Spain so the French and Spanish border is right at the top there and then I descended down into Bozost on that beautiful long flowing winding descent really really nice one down there turned right at Bozost and then was onto a big valley road for a while across to Vieja once I was through Vieja and out the other side I started this long valley road and now I'm climbing up the Port de Managua up to 2072 meters right at the top thankfully it's not too hot today there's a little bit of a headwind but that's okay I'm just cruising today as I said a transition stage just one to enjoy Cruise along, get to the top of this climb, I'll chat to you guys in a bit. So just uh, just ticked over 100 kilometers, just a bit over four hours. It is slow going today, not only because of the 2,000 meters of climbing packed into the first 100 Ks, actually more like the first sort of 70 Ks. So quite a lot of climbing at the start there. Also then I've just been going down the big valley road straight into a block headwind. And even though it's been kind of trending downhill, I've just been going into this headwind this morning when I woke up, I was having a quick message back and forth with Ben who 
did a ride around here a few days ago and uh, he was saying how he took this climb and then turned off onto a dirt road. And then once he got to the top of that, he descended down a different descent back down into La Seu de Gel. And he said it's a different way of getting back rather than going over Canto. So although I was meant to keep going down that valley road for a few more kilometers to sort and then turn off to go up Col del Canto, which I came over the other day, that real big one in the heat, I decided I'll turn off a bit early, go up this road climb onto some gravel and ride some gravel up to the very, very top of the berg and then descend down into Le Seu. So I've just turned off from the main road. I'm onto the road part of the climb now. And I guess in a couple of k's it turns to gravel. There is a little bit of rain around, so I'm hoping it doesn't turn out to be real muddy. But Ben said it's quite rideable, so I'll give this one a crack. So far it's a little bit steep down the bottom here, but uh, should hopefully be all good. Let's see. gravel sector out the way and now I've just got a nice big road descent down to La Seine d'Agel where I'm staying tonight. Alrighty, so I'm sitting here in La Seu de Gel. I've just ridden today's stage. That was seven hours, just a bit over 150 Ks, at about 3,300 meters or so. Not a super hard day, but out of that 3,300 meters, all of it was basically packed into the first 120 Ks. And especially the first sort of two and a half thousand meters were packed into the first 70 Ks. So it was a pretty punchy day at the start, but I got through in the end, I was pretty tired, but I feel good now for the fact that I've had a bunch of food. So I'm gonna tell you guys what I ate, not only today, but over the last couple of days, because I know a lot of people are wondering what I've been eating for this trip. Before I get into this, I do want to say that this is not nutrition advice for you guys. I need to make that really clear. Anything that goes on YouTube is not telling you what to do. It's informing you of what I've done. Some of this works for me. Some of it doesn't work for me. Not all of it's going to work for you guys if you're planning on doing a trip like this. So bear with me while I tell you everything, and then you can do with that information what you like. So let's start with the day before I left. So on Sunday night, I went out and I had a really big feed of sushi. Now, I didn't take any photos of the sushi that I ate, but I'll put a photo on the screen now of me eating some sushi so you can see. This is me eating some sushi. I did a lot of this on Sunday night because I knew I had a massive day on Monday. And then on Monday morning before I rode, I had a big bowl of oats that I had put in the fridge the night before with the oats with cinnamon and honey on there. Now in my bottles going on my bike, I had a one liter bottle and also a 600 milliliter bottle on the bike. In the one liter bottle, I had two servings of fuel plus carbohydrate powder, which fuel plus carbohydrate powder has 40 grams of carbohydrates per serve. So I had 80 grams of carbohydrates in that one liter bottle. And then I had another one and a half servings in the 600 milliliter bottle. For this trip, I was aiming for around 80 to 90 grams of carbohydrates per hour on the bike, especially on day one when I was doing the biggest day. And I was also going to be pushing the hardest because I was the most fresh. So I wanted to stay on top of that carbohydrate need. So when I rolled out, I was sipping on that first one liter bottle. That took me the first couple of hours to get through. So there was 80 grams in that first two hours of drink that I took on. And then in between kilometer 30 and kilometer 40, I ate one of the Fuel Plus oat bars that has 30 grams of carbohydrates in it. And then at hour two and a half, I had one gel. So an extra 50 grams of carbohydrate. I had another bar at three hours and 40 minutes into the ride. And then I started up the Colada de 
Tossus. At kilometre 108 going up Colada de Tossus, I was about four hours and 10 minutes into the ride. I had another gel at that stage and then I stopped at about kilometre 115 and filled up both my bottles and I put in my bottle one sachet of Fuel Plus in the one litre bottle and I also put a 1500 milligram sachet of Precision Hydration Electrolyte Powder into that bottle as well. After four hours and 40 minutes, I had another gel and then after about six hours, I had another gel as well. And then I stopped at a little shop and filled up both my bottles with another litre of water because I was getting low on water. And I put another 1500 milligram sachet of powder into my bottle there as well as a Fuel Plus sachet. Halfway up the Col del Canto in the heat there, I had another Fuel Plus gel at that stage. And then because I was out of water at about kilometre 223 or so, I stopped at a little shop halfway down the Col del Canto descent and I had a can of Coke, a can of Aquarius, and I filled up both my bottles with water. At kilometre 253, about nine hours and nine minutes in, I had another gel when I started up the Bon Agua. At kilometre 275, 10 hours and 15 minutes in, I had one last gel and then I went up to the top of the Bon Agua. I got into VA, into the hotel, and I immediately had one sachet of Fuel Plus carbohydrate mix, and I also had a 1500 milligram sachet of the Precision Hydration Electrolyte Powder as well. And then I went out and I had a crepe with chicken and egg on it for a sort of pre-dinner. And then I went out to dinner and I had a big bowl of pasta sitting looking over the air there as well. I don't really like taking photos or videos of the food that I'm eating while I'm in crowded places, especially by myself. It kind of feels a bit awkward, but I tried to get as much as I could just sneakily there for you guys to see what I'm eating. And uh, yeah, so that's what I did. I also drank a whole bunch of water before bed as well. So that's day one. Now let's jump into day two. On the morning of day two in Vieja there, I had a bowl of muesli for breakfast and also two cups of juice. And then I also had a cup of coffee as well. When I rolled out the door in my bottles, I had two sachets of Fuel Plus in the one liter bottle and one sachet of the Fuel Plus in the 600 ml bottle. After one and a half hours, when I started up the Parasword climb, I had one gel. And then after two and a half hours, I had another gel as well. After two hours 50, when I was coming up the colder span, I had one Fuel Plus bar. And shortly after that, I finished my first one liter bottle of water with that 80 grams of carbohydrates in it. I started down the descent of the Aspan on the other side and I stopped, I was around kilometer 85 at this stage. I had an Orangina and I got a bunch of water as well. I put two more Fuel Plus sachets in the one liter bottle and then I just had water in the second, the 600 ml bottle there as well. I did also eat a Snickers at this stop and then I kept pressing on into the base of the Tourmalet. Once I got through the base of the Tourmalet and I started up the climb, I had one gel. This was at about kilometer 90, about four hours or so in. I had another gel a little bit after that, about halfway up the Tourmalet. And then once I got to the top, I put a 1500 milligram sachet of the electrolyte powder into my bottle while I had that view down over the climb. And I drank that, that was about 400 milliliters of water or so. And I drank it all in one go because I hadn't actually had any salt yet that day. And I wanted to make sure that I was rehydrating as much as possible because of the amount that I had been sweating going up all the climbs earlier on in the day. Once I descended off the Tourmalet and I started up the next climb, which was the Hawkette, I had two gels in quick succession and then I ran out of water. I knew that I was gonna be okay though because I only had six Ks to get to the top of the climb. And even though it was really hot because I had been hydrating, I felt okay. So I climbed up there in the heat without any water. But then once I descended off the other side, I came into the first town. I went to that little public fountain there and I filled up my one liter bottle with one sachet of Fuel Plus. And then I filled up the second bottle just with water and then I ate a gel at the same time. Now this was the first time in the previous sort of uh, one and a half days of riding about 400 kilometers or so, 450 by this stage, that I actually started to bonk just a little bit. And I was also running low on all of the Fuel Plus supplies that I had with me. So I actually stopped in San Larry Salon and bought a bunch of really terrible gels and bars from an Intersport there. They were super expensive and they provided basically no nutrition. What I actually should have done was bought just a can of Coke. A can of Coke probably would have worked better, but I started eating those gels and bars as I started up the Valorona Z. And then as I got further up to the towards the top, I had two of the bars. The bars were so bad, I didn't even take a video of them. There was nice views to look at instead of looking at the bars, but I uh, ate those and then I got to the top of the Val Le I descended off the other side and then when I started up the Parasord, I finished off the last of my water. I got to the top of the Parasord and I descended down the other side into Bagnos du Nichon, which is where I stayed last night. Once I got there, I was actually really, really hungry, which is an idea that I underfueled yesterday.
yesterday. I was trying to avoid stopping, but this can have detrimental effects because of the fact that you under fuel if you don't bring enough nutrition with you. So once I got down into Banyeres to Nushon, I raided the apartment that I was staying at, ate a whole bunch of biscuits, drank a Clara straight out of the fridge. And then for dinner last night, I went out, I had a really large calzone and I had a side salad with that. I'd actually said to the woman, can I please have a salad? I didn't realize my calzone came with a salad. So I had two salads and my calzone. I also had a glass of wine and a big bottle of water as well because I was pretty parched by that stage. So that brings us up to today, day three. This morning when I rolled out, I went straight to a boulangerie as you would have seen and I had an apple tart and an orangina. A little bit of carbs to get the day started. Then I rolled out and straight up the Parasword. At kilometer 30, I had one gel. Kilometer 35, I had a bar. And then at kilometer 50, I had a gel as well. As you can see, these are the power bar gels that I was having. I bought these at a little bike shop. When I got into Banyeres to Luchon last night, I couldn't find anything better. But I had one of those again at kilometer 60, and then I had another one at kilometer 75. At kilometer 91, I stopped at a little hotel, and I got myself a bottle of Coke and also a big 1.5 liter bottle of water. Now, the bottle of Coke was because I was actually exhausted and I did want the caffeine. So a few kilometers later, once I started up that next climb, I started feeling really good before I got onto the gravel, which made a big difference because at that stage I had been very tired and I just wanted a good pick me up. At kilometer 101, I had a gel. At kilometer 107, I had another gel. And then at kilometer 120, I had two more gels in quick succession. Then I drank the rest of my water and then I rolled the 30 kilometers down here into La Seu de Gel. And then I stopped at a petrol station and I grabbed a big one liter cacao lit, which is a chocolate milk that they only sell in Catalonia. I drank that entire one liter bottle of chocolate milk. I also bought myself a bag of Harry and now I'm about to go out for dinner somewhere in Lasso, see what I can find and grab a bunch more food because I'm starting to get a bit hungry after today's ride. Alrighty, so that brings us up to exactly where we are right now. Those are all the things I've eaten over the last three days. As you can see, a lot of gels, a lot of carbohydrate powder, heaps of sugar. I know people are gonna jump in the comments and tell me gels are terrible for me or tell me I need to brush my teeth and things like this. But the gels and the carbohydrate powder and the sodium that I have been having these last three days has worked really well. I could have felt better yesterday and today had I had more supplies with me, but that stuff is super heavy. And so when you're doing a bikepacking trip like this, carrying everything you need, it's a little bit hard to stay on top of the amount of carbohydrates you need, but it has worked so far. I feel pretty good now. I do need a solid dinner tonight and I am going to have a coffee with a special guest tomorrow morning here in La Seu. You guys will uh, see what we have a chat about tomorrow morning and then I'll get going back to Girona. So let me go out and get some dinner and I'll talk to you guys very soon. Bon dia. Bon dia, welcome to day four. We're up to day four, the final day for me. As you can see, I'm just catching up with Ben. We just caught up for a coffee in La Seu there. Before we rolled out, we we're at the Velo Cafe, just having a brew and a piece of cake. For anyone wondering what I had for dinner last night, I had Indian. Pretty big meal of Indian last night. Anyway, I just thought I'd catch up with Ben because uh, it's been a while since I've seen him. He's come back from the tour. We haven't actually caught up properly since the tour of, on camera. I just wanted to ask you though, can you tell me on the day that you did the biggest day of climbing in the tour, the Queen stage, the one that Felix won? Yeah, up to Courchevel. Yeah, what was your eating plan for that day? So, started with a better fuel and a mix, so that's 80 grams in a better, and I think it's 40 in our mix bottle. Then I had probably three better fuel jellies, which are about 40 grams each, I believe, plus maybe two 60 gram gels. So that's for the start. Because it was a hard start and I was trying to make sure that uh, I never went low. <laughs> yeah. So and you're then, starting out with yeah. a whole heap of... Well, the very few jellies are light and they are, you know, only, uh, you know, they, they are jelly. Yeah. Very but edible. Very edible, you super mean. Super edible. Nothing, nothing, no kind of bar that was hard to chew. And then lived off a lot of water because it was also super hot with the occasional better fuel grabbed from the car. I reckon that day I had three better fuels, probably five of these better jellies, 
I couldn't tell you how many gels, but you were always aiming for about 110 to 120 grams per hour. So it was super high. But you're in a break like that. Yeah, you were I working think, I think pretty I burned, hard all day. Yeah, I would have burned upwards of 5,000 kgs that day. It was a five hour day. In five hours. Maybe more, so it's 1,000 calories per hour, which is super high. And did you find it hard to take on to take on that amount? No, or? because I trained with that on various days to practice. Yeah. And remember, it's also day 16 or day 15 of the tour, so you're uh, <laughs> you're well adapted by this point. Yeah, you burn about the same amount of calories that I did in about two and a half, no, what, maybe like three and a half hours less than I did the other day. Yeah, I mean, racing's yeah. racing. It's one of those things where there's nothing like it. And you're you pushing have to a lot commit. of power. But uh, yeah, as long as you feel well, that's number one, but then hydration too. I have to have a lot of water because you have to balance that kind of extra acidity and pH that comes with all the gels and the mix. How much liquid do you think you consumed that day as well? Oh, I say, oh, it's so hard to say. Yeah, it'd be hey? impossible to Because you're just grabbing bottles. Say, yeah, even on, on hot days, we probably have close to 15 bottles uh, at least, maybe more. So maybe like seven or eight liters? I um, remember, what are they, 400 each bottle? Anyway, it's hard to, hard it's hard to, quantify. to quantify. Yeah. Cool, and then just tell me, we're just riding up the Aristot climb outside of Andorra. Ben rode down from Andorra, got about four hours. He's about to go and do efforts. So I'm gonna keep going back to Girona. Just tell me, what are your efforts now? I have four 12 minute torque efforts with mixed cadence. So it's like, I think three minutes torque, three minutes high cadence. Nothing crazy power wise as I start up again. Not from a zero, obviously, but start up again. You've had a bit training of a break. going towards uh, Quebec and Montreal. Quebec, Montreal, and then Luxembourg, and then Italy. I'll Some probably Italian try to do races. as many Italian races as I can yeah, at the end of the year. So, bit of a long season. Yeah. TDU until Lombardia. <laughs> but, uh, Solid 10 months. Yeah. All right, sweet. I'm going to keep rolling. I'm going to leave Ben to do his high cadence, high torque, low cadence, etc. etc. Cheers for catching up. Cheers, man. See you soon. We'll see you guys very shortly. So that brings us up to where we are right now. I'm currently 162 kilometers into today's 193. I'm currently coming up the last little climb of the day. This was the first one that I did the other day when I crested the top just as it was coming up to sunrise. The first 40 or so Ks of today were actually uphill. I had the Collada de Tossus, which is like a 22 kilometer climb. Had a really nice long descent down the other side and then start up my second last climb of the day and went over that. That's about another 20K climb or so. And then another nice, long, beautiful descent down the other side of that. And now I'm coming up this final last little climb that I came over literally three and a half days ago to the hour. So done a, a big three and a half days of riding and I hope you guys have enjoyed watching me suffer along the way. What is interesting is although I say I suffered along the way, I don't actually mean I suffered. I have really genuinely felt awesome this trip. And I think one of the biggest reasons why is because I've eaten so much along the way and I've just really enjoyed being out in the mountains, pushing along at my own pace, being super scenic as well, which always helps. For the moment, I'm gonna roll the last 30 Ks back to Girona. I'll do one last catch up with you there to give you my final stats for this entire trip. And yeah, I'll chat to you guys soon.
Oof. Alrighty, so just arrived back to Girona. What an epic four days, or actually three and a half days since I left Girona. Uh, and an epic few days of riding up in the Pyrenees Mountains. That was one of the most enjoyable few days of solo riding I might have ever done in my life. Maybe the best trip I've ever done in my life. I enjoyed that so, so much. That much climbing, that much scenery. My stats for this week for the four days of riding are 865Ks and a bit over 16,000 meters of climbing. So a substantial amount of climbing, a substantial amount of kilometers for the, for the few days. I packed my bike super light, just wore one kit. And as I keep saying, I enjoyed it a lot. There's not a lot more to say really, other than I hope you guys have enjoyed joining me on this journey. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys all in another episode of Tristan Take Video very, very soon. Right, thanks guys. Adieu.